Welcome back to the podcast. This week, I have the pleasure of interviewing Miss Gina Luker of the Shabby Creek Cottage. She actually no longer blogs, but she has an amazing following of over 700,000 people. She is going to share with us a little bit about her secret to success by doing the complete polar opposite of what everybody else is doing. So I'm so excited to share her with you. Listen, tune in, lean in, get some knowledge from her and enjoy. Let's hear from Gina Luker. Hey, my friend, it's Melanie Ferguson, your host of Creatives on Fire, the podcast where I hope to inspire you to create a profitable six-figure following online. So turn it up and listen in to amazing stories of success, along with behind-the-scenes secrets and valuable tips from, you guessed it, Creatives on Fire. Welcome back to the podcast. This week, I have an amazing friend, Gina Luker. She is the genius behind the blog, The Shabby Creek Cottage, and I'm so excited to have you. Welcome, Gina. Thanks for having me. Hey there. Well, hey, is there anything I've left out? Anything you want to share with us about who you are and what you do? Um, I'm kind of a blog dropout, but I still make uh, multi-six figures online. It, it's a long story, but... You can make money online in a million different ways. And that's the beauty of it. I do love that. But in order to make money online, would you say that you have to have an audience? Absolutely. You have to have an audience. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Well, that's what this whole podcast is about. So I'm so excited to hear from you because I know that you have conquered the mystery behind growing a six-figure following. And I cannot wait to hear all about it. So tell me what worked for you the best at the beginning when you were just starting out trying to grow your page? So when I first started trying to grow my business, Facebook was actually not the catalyst for it. It was Pinterest way back in the day. And that was a very, very beginning of Pinterest. I figured out very quickly how to leverage being an early adapter on Pinterest to growing my blog. And then of course, through growing my blog, my Facebook page started to grow. And then I learned a few years later how to actually grow Facebook. And that's a lot of what it is, is paying attention to what works and doing more of that and doing less of what doesn't work. It's kind of a never ending cycle of constantly evaluating what's going on and doing more of what works. So let's circle back to Pinterest. What worked for you on Pinterest in those early days that got you excited? Well, I was one of, I think, the first people that started pretty much exclusively pinning my own stuff. Because in the beginning, everybody was like, you have to pin other people's stuff, like only pin other people's stuff. And I was like, but why? Like I got awesome content. Why wouldn't I want to share it? And so I did that. And um, I started doing that very, very strategically. And I, I did things like, you know, testing the different pins, the different sizes, the different words and fonts and, and the layouts of what those look like. And that was very, very, very early on when you started seeing words on pins. And so like the visual aspect of it was really, really, really important. And as Pinterest grew and it got more and more, you know, full of people doing the same tactics, my traffic did dwindle after that. But for the most part, like I went through a good like five year spurt of pretty much staying consistent to my brand by by posting my content because I realized, and this is true for any platform, the majority of the time people follow you because they want to see you. They want to see your ideas and what you have to say and what you bring to the table. So if people were going to follow me on Pinterest, it was going to be because they wanted to see what I had to offer the world. And the same works for Facebook and Instagram, of course. But in learning to do that, you, you have to 
to let go of a lot of limiting beliefs <laughs> in the fact that, you know, other people may see it, you know, as selfish or whatever, but you kind of have to learn to let that go. I don't know if I actually answered your question, but you yeah. did an excellent job. So basically <laughs> just because it's what everyone else is doing doesn't necessarily mean that's what you want to do or pursue. You have to be true to you and then just let the rest fall into place. Yeah, I tend to find the things that work best are the polar opposite of what everybody else is doing. If everybody else is going left, I'm going to go right, you know, and that's pretty much my complete strategy to business is whatever people are doing, be the polar opposite. That's a great nugget right there, because I think there's a lot of books written about it like that. (laughs) The um, ocean book about the blue water and the red water and all of that. There's a, there's a bunch of books out there about doing the opposite of what looks like the right thing. Yep. So let me ask you, Gina, um, when did you make the shift and it wasn't probably a hard shift, but when did you start growing a Facebook audience and what worked for you there? I wrote a post on a complete, total whim about how to do freezer meals. I literally woke up one morning and I was like, I think I'm going to pre-make some meals. We went to the store. I got to the store and I was like, I'm going to do a whole month of meals. And so I came home and in one afternoon, I made 30 days worth of freezer meals, which actually lasted a couple of months. But I made 30 freezer meals in about four hours with about 300 bucks. And I randomly, I had, I don't know, five or 6,000 fans on Facebook at the time. And I randomly put up, like, I feel like I have had such a productive day. Like I just made 30 freezer meals this afternoon. Like I'm so proud of myself. Go me. Cause those were the days when you would just post random things like that, that didn't give tons of value. It was just, it was more like a conversation with your, with your audience And they went nuts. At that point, it was the most comments I had ever had on a post. And they were like, you need to write a blog post about it, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, okay. All right, fine. I will. And so it took me forever. But I wrote a long blog post, exactly what I did, all the recipes, everything all in there. It's my number one blog post of all time. And I posted it on Facebook and then it went viral. And when I say viral, I mean viral. I literally broke my blog because one day I had 1.2 million page views in one day from that Facebook post that just got shared and shared and shared like wildfire. And I was like, what the heck? Now that traffic didn't stay like two days later, it plummeted. But that was when I understood the power of Facebook. And so that's when I decided to figure out how to actually grow a page. And that's kind of what started it all, honestly. And so now I'm up to like 700,000 fans or something, I think. So, you know, it worked. (laughs) I would say so. So (laughs) what I'm hearing you say, which is the beauty of it, is you literally took this free platform, you sprinkled something out there that was natural. It was true to you. It was just kind of your everyday thought process, what you were doing Mm -hmm. in your life and your people responded and they responded in overwhelming, you know, I see you. I'm just like you. I love this. And you leaned into it and you repurposed that thought with the freezer mills and created an actual physical blog post to go with it. And then posted it again in the same spot to the same people. And that's kind of your formula, <laughs> whether and you know it or not. I did. When, I, when that blog post, the first time it went, because it's gone viral probably 20 times by now, because it's like seven years old. It's an old post at this point, but it still gets traffic every day. And after it went viral the first time, I was like, well, I've got to figure out how to make money out of this particular post. So I threw a bunch of... Um, affiliate links in it obviously which did help but then I realized like there are still days when I will get randomly like somebody new will pin it or share it on Facebook or whatever and I'll randomly get 50 or 60,000 hits on that blog post in one day 
And so I realized it needs a lead magnet because I love email marketing. And so I put together, actually, I didn't do it myself. One of my readers said, hey, I made this shopping list for the whole thing. So you can give it to your readers if you want. And I was like, okay, cool. So I took her list and I made it pretty and I used it for a lead magnet for my blog. But then, because I like tripwires, tripwires are my jam. I took the blog post in its entirety, took it to Canva, made an ebook and put a tripwire behind it. And the tripwire page literally says, if you want the blog post you just read word for word in an ebook, it's $1.99. And I sell those ebooks every day to this day. I don't even know how much money I've made off that ebook at this point at a buck 99. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy pants. Amazing. Oh my goodness, Gina. I don't know. I mean, I'm fired up now. So (laughs) you have literally taken what was just a random rainy day post to um, probably six figure income over the years. Oh yeah. It's It's easily made six figures. Yeah. Yes. With just the one concept from something that one of your followers gave you for free. Yes. 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 Now that's listening to your audience. (laughs) Yeah, I absolutely I mean, love just, that. When you, when you find these opportunities it, and they just randomly happen, the thing is you have to capitalize on those opportunities. We all have opportunities all day, every day from every direction, but we have to capitalize on them, you know? Yep. Taking action. And you could have just sat back and made the freezer meals and not even posted it on your page. You yep. could have just taken that first post and been like, oh, yay, my people liked it. I feel so good. Pat myself on the back. But you went a step further and you kept taking action over and over. And that is how it evolved. I love that. So moving forward, now that you're at the six, 700,000 follower count, do you feel like you use some of these same processes as you grew to continue to grow? Well, I don't focus on that page as much anymore. It still grows organically. It, we still feed it every day. We use it for predominantly for blog traffic and affiliate marketing at this point. I'm not, I haven't created any new blog content in like three years. Um, <laughs> so I'm kind of a blog to drop out, but I mean, my, my, my blog still makes six figures. It's literally the, the epitome of passive income. Um, but, you know, we use that for affiliate marketing, for driving more traffic back to the blog, for growing an email list and, you know, all those things that go with that. But the same tactics still work. Like I've, I've done it. I've taught it multiple times. The same tactics still work. You just have to, you know, pay attention and do more of what works. Yes. So you had mentioned that that one post had gone viral several times. Did Mm -hmm. it do that naturally or did you repost it? Um, I repost content on Facebook quite a bit. I still, I mean, I'm still posting things. I mean, that was probably seven or eight years ago. It was more than that now, probably. But anyway, I digress. Uh, We still post that about once every three months. The very best of the best blog blog content that I still have, because I have hundreds and hundreds of posts. Um, I'm a huge believer in what I call sustainable content, which is write it once and promote it forever. And so we have so much sustainable content that we can still continue because even if you posted it three months ago, chances are the people who saw it three months ago and the people who are going to see it today are not the same people. So, you know, you're, you're exposing it to a new audience every time you do that. That's exactly right. I love that advice. And I love that saying the, um, create it once and post it forever or promote it forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's just very, very much wisdom right there. So what inspires you, Gina? What motivates you to keep going every day? I think it's just like, I, I have this like need to help others. And I am blessed enough that I'm, I'm a pretty quick learner and I'm a good teacher. Like I'm good at teaching people how to do things. And I feel like it's my duty because I can learn quickly and I can teach well that 
I I'm I feel like my purpose is to help other people navigate the online space, you know? I love that. I love that. And it is kind of our almost like innate duty to give back where we've been given Mm -hmm. and whether we were given it through an individual or just through our own efforts, it's just something that feels good and probably definitely, definitely inspires you to, to keep giving. And that's a great place to come from when it comes to creating content is from a place of wanting to help. Would you say? Absolutely. Yeah. If you're just writing for yourself, you're not really helping anybody. Um, whenever I create content, I ask myself, who is this going to help? And I want to write it from a helping standpoint and not, you know, just to tell my story. Exactly. Um, I mean, I'm here to be of service to others, not just to serve myself, you know? That is awesome. Well, Gina, listen, where can everybody find you online? You can find me at um, theshabbycreekcottage.com. You can find me on Instagram. That is my jam. That's my preferred place to hang out. Um, You can find me there at the Shabby Creek Cottage. And you can find me live twice a week on my crafting Facebook page, which is crafting at the Shabby Creek Cottage. Oh, that was a mouthful. Uh I love it. So awesome. Well, thank you so much for just pouring into us. You've been an amazing help this week, and I just appreciate you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you so much, my friend, for listening to the podcast. I'm blessed every single time you come back and listen to an episode. It's especially amazing when you share it with others on social media. So be sure to follow Creatives on Fire online. Listen, if you have not already done so, I want you to go ahead and download the five ideas I personally used to explode my online audience growth to a six-figure following. You can find that at creativesonfirepodcast.com. I appreciate you. And until next time, stay inspired.